The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, Do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door. And pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Return to me with all your heart says the Lord. Be reconciled to God, says Paul on behalf of Christ. Return, says the prophet Joel, because God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. This is the voice that calls us here tonight. The voice that speaks those words. It's not a voice of rebuke. It's the voice of the prodigal father in Jesus' parable who longs only to welcome a beloved child home. It's not a voice that crushes with fear. It's a voice of hope calling to bring us home. It's a voice that comes directly from the center of the heart of the triune God. A voice that, if we hear it, would lead us to drop everything and turn around and come home. A voice that, the prophet says, makes a wedding couple want to leave their ceremony and an infant leave the breast. Jesus says, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. But the voice we hear tonight tells us, that before we can know where our heart is, there is this truth first. We are in the center of God's heart. And we are beloved, desired. And that is the wonder with which we begin our Lenten journey. We have learned to face our failure and our sin with shame, with heads down. That's a problem. The scriptures certainly criticize our lack of love, our failure to do justice and peace, the hurts we lay on each other, on our neighbor, on God's good creation. That may feel like shame, but that isn't how God ever calls us home or comes to us. In the flesh, bearing our humanity, Christ always offers welcome and hope, even to those doing wrong. 
Neither do I condemn you, says Jesus. Go and sin no more, again and again, even while naming that sin and naming that which we do that is not of love, that isn't the love that God made us to have. Throughout the scriptures, the triune God relentlessly calls us home, cries out for us in love. Even when God is angry, there is always the heart of God, like the heart we hear in Hosea. How can I give you up? You are my child. You are my beloved. We don't doubt our sin and failure. We confess them. We will tonight. We will probably and do feel shame about them or guilt or sadness or other powerful emotions. But what the triune God would have us know tonight is that we are at the center of God's heart and the center of God's love. We are desired. We are beloved. And that is the reality with which we live our lives. So what's with the ashes then? Aren't they our abasing of ourselves? It's actually the opposite. We don't put on ashes to tell everyone how awful we are, or to say how ashamed of ourselves we are, or to call ourselves nothing like we're worms. That's not how God sees us. To God, we are beloved. But in ancient times, the faithful would pour ashes over their head as a sign of their repentance and to claim that they were nothing before God. But Jesus suggests today that those days are gone. When we fast, when we confess, when we turn to God, Jesus says we don't need to do big public displays to show people that's what we're doing. God knows our heart, and we trust in God's love. So we wash our faces, and we stand firm in God's love. But listen to the words that will be said over each of us tonight. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. We receive ashes to remember that we are mortal, that we are dying, that we are dust and we will end up as dust. We realize that we have no strength, none at all, for us to be alive and to do life, for us to grow into Christ, for us to do anything. We are dust. And if our dust is going to live, it's going to have to live through the power of God. So these ashes are hope for us tonight. Because the triune God is the one who breathes life into dust and puts on bone and sinew and flesh, who raises us up in strength to be God's love in the world. So we cannot walk this path alone. This little Lenten journey we do is a preparation, a practicing of the greater walk of faith we live in our lives. It's a walk of reconciling with God and with each other. It's a walk of returning to God, but we cannot walk it alone, not without our God who has called us beloved, who has given us life. The forgiveness we receive gives us hope because it restores us to God. And we don't have to hide in the bushes of the garden ashamed to meet God as Adam and Eve. Forgiveness means we are beloved and we get to walk with God again. The grace that God gives us, the change that God makes in us, makes us new. And we remain in God's love or we do nothing. We are dust. And without that grace and love, nothing is possible. We can't confess. We can't repent. We can't love unless we remain in the love of God that calls us and longs for us. And when we remain in that love, our lives are utterly changed. 
The joy that permeates today is that the loving voice of God never stops calling to us. The loving heart of God never stops longing for us. The loving arms of God never stop reaching for us. And that is the joy in which we live. And we are utterly changed. Paul says our lives in God transcend all circumstances. We look like we have nothing, but we have everything. Our path looks like we're dying, but we are truly alive. We belong and live in the center of God's heart, so all is healed and holy, even if we or the world cannot see it inside us. And now we understand what Jesus is saying. Where your heart is, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. And if we live and move in the center of God's heart, that's our treasure, without question. So that's where our heart is, too. That's our home. So this is our journey. We walk our path aware that we are dying and trusting in the love of God that cannot be taken from us. We walk the path as dust, but aware of our mortality in the confidence in God's mercy and love and in the joy that God breathes life into our dust, the same God who made all things. And we walk with each other, helping, supporting, reminding, strengthening, guiding. And we walk out into the world bearing this love so that everyone else, so that all people can hear the same voice and know that they too have God's love that cannot be taken from them. That's our treasure. That's where our heart is. That's where we follow. In the name of Jesus, amen.